Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The Global Wind Energy Council included extensive commentary on the South African market in its latest Global Wind report. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss its optimistic outlook for the country despite recent project delays. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. The council believes South Africa's wind market is likely to break out from its lull of 2016. Why? Well, as you say, there's been this delay, protracted delay. In 2015, quite a lot of capacity was procured by the IPP office. Um, Twelve of those projects were wind. Uh, the, the, the there were 37 in all. And uh, in 2016, we saw that the state-owned utility, Eskom, refused to sign those power purchase agreements, um, sending a letter to the Minister of Energy and Public Enterprises saying, you know, they needed guidance because of the lack of visibility around cost recovery. That has been the state of play now for, it's going on for the, the initial projects that were procured nearly two years. But in February, uh, President Jacob Zuma uh, made an announcement in his State of the Nation address that the projects that have been procured will be uh, contracted and that Eskin has been asked to sign. A date then was set of April 11th uh, by the former Energy Minister, Tina Jomat pedersen uh, to sign these projects. That, uh, that date then was shifted following the cabinet reshuffle and the entry of Minister Kubai, uh, who wanted more time to uh, digest the PPAs and consult with her cabinet colleagues, especially Lynn Brown, the Public Enterprises Minister, as well as the um, uh, new finance minister, Malusi Gigaba. So <laughs> we haven't got uh, yet a new date, but what the Global Wind Energy Council is saying in its report is that they are fairly optimistic that the different hurdles that were in place for 2016, which led to South Africa only adding about 400 megawatts of wind capacity last year, uh, there's, there's a good sign that the stalemate is, is going to end and that will therefore release this, this pent-up project pipeline and that we should see a much better year uh, in 2017 once those contracts are signed. They, they do, you know, uh, you know these, it's not that it's a done deal, but they feel that there's, there's a lot going for it um, to get these projects uh, underway. And um, that, that we'll see these, these um, 37 renewables projects built over the next two years. As I said, 12 of those wind and we'll have South Africa uh, again as a, as a leading emerging market in, in wind um, and, we'll, and you know, s should re-stimulate uh, an industry that's really been in the doldrums. And we've also seen on the localization side, industries that supply into wind projects, into solar projects have been taking major strain. But this report suggests that the, that the projects um, are ready um, they just need the signing from Eskom, and then we should see uh, things getting going again in, in the wind energy space. Is the council being overly optimistic? Well, that's the big. <laughs> that is really the big question. You know, uh, following uh, Jacob Zuma's announcement in uh, February, there was a lot of optimism that things were going to go uh, uh, speedily. Then there was this whole process of getting uh, bid quotations for the grid connection. Um, getting that paperwork out the way. A lot of work was done to try and meet that April 11 deadline. And uh, there, was, there was also concern during that process that some of the, the quotations coming back from Eskom were a lot higher. Uh, Eskom has reiterated that they don't have visibility on the cost recovery mechanism. They say they are constrained in their ability to get uh, to recover the costs for renewable uh, projects by the fact that the, the regulatory clearing account me mechanism is closed off to them due to legal uncertainty. So the, uh, the RCA process was challenged uh, and NERSA was found wanting by the court and the last uh, application of the RCA was found to be uh, unlawful. Uh, NERSA is challenging that and appealing that, but we don't have certainty. So Eskom uh, really has to uh, uh, is saying they need some sort of uh, visibility of where they're going to recover the cost if they can't get it through the tariff. They have open discussions with the National Treasury about trying to recoup that possibly from the taxpayer in the form of the guarantee, but uh, there's no real clarity there. I think one of the, the hopeful signs was that uh, the new finance minister, Malusi Guraba, in an address just before he went to the IMF and World Bank spring meetings, 
made it clear that ESCOM shouldn't be engaging in a, in a policy discussion. If they have a corporate uh, th corporate difficulties, uh, you know, in terms of the, f uh, the funding of these projects, that needs to be discussed in a collegial way. Uh, but that they shouldn't be saying that uh, you know that the, the renewal or questioning the renewable program and the, the role of renewables in the energy mix. So you try to put a, 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 a lid on that. But we still have to wait for the modalities. We need the, the new Minister of Energy, uh, 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 along with Lynn, Lynn Brown, the Public Enterprise Minister, and the uh, uh, new Finance Minister to come to some sort of res resolution around the modalities, and we need a new date to be set. I think what, what is happening in the next few weeks is that there will be a budget vote addressed by the new Minister um, uh, to Parliament. And that might be the time where she gives us greater visibility as to the way forward for renewable energy generally in South Africa and these wind, wind projects as well. The global body is also optimistic about the medium term prospects for wind energy in the rest of Africa. Yes, uh, they, they, I think there was this reflection that 2016 was not a great year for Africa. It wasn't a great year for a number of emerging markets. The uh, a total of 54 gigawatts was added globally, which was uh, below their target. Now, largely that was accounted for because the, the big player at the moment in adding capacity is China. They added 23 gigawatts last year. That sounds like a lot, but it's a lot less than what people have been hoping. India had a record year, but it wasn't enough to offset what uh, the, the drop from China, as well as these key emerging markets such as South Africa, which went through this major hiatus, and Brazil also had a, a tough year. And what uh, the, the, the global body is saying now is that they think there's this pent-up demand, there's this, these projects already, and we should start seeing in a number of these emerging markets, um, but in Africa in particular, we should start seeing some of these projects coming to fruition during 2017. We know, for instance, that the large um, 310 megawatt uh, um, project in Kenya, Lake Takana, is, is ready to go. So that, that's already a, a bit of a game changer for, the, for that East Africa. Uh, then they mention, obviously, what's happening um, in South Africa, that there's these project, there's projects that are prepared, just about getting the final contract in place and starting to build. And then also they, they're quite optimistic about what's happening in Morocco. Uh, so, so generally, they think that Africa, as they describe it, is going to have a big year in 2017 in the area of wind. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.